Was I wrong about the GH6? Well, I've had it for two weeks and I've already shot a short film with it. Let's find out. If you're here for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Hey Frank, turn the car off and put your hands on the wheel. Man, you really are that super cop, ain't you, Richie? You know, I was talking to my lawyers. They told me something I can't believe. Did you really find a million dollars in the trunk of a car and turn it in? Did you do that? Yeah. You know Johnny Law got it though, right? Maybe. Ain't no maybe about it. You turned that money in, he took it, and now you ain't got nothing to show for it. Why would you do that? It was the right thing to do. That's a good answer. You see, the question I've been asking myself is would you do it again? I mean, that's a lot of money. So you give me an address, I'll make sure that car's there, I'll make sure that money's in the trunk. No thanks. Come on now, Richie. You ain't no better than any of them other cops, man. You're the same. You're them. Let me ask you this. Do you really think that putting me behind bars is gonna change anything on the streets? Them dope fiends still gonna shoot it. They gonna steal for it. They gonna die for it. Putting me in or out ain't gonna change one thing. And that's the way it is? That's just the way it is. So what you got on me, huh? For my brother, we got a little bit of powder. We got that little snitch-ass driver. You gonna need more than that. We got supply, conspiracy, possession, bribing a law officer. I got people who will testify to seeing you kill in cold blood. I got your offshore bank accounts, your businesses, your real estate, all bought with money from heroin. And I got hundreds of parents of dead kids, addicts who owed it on your product, and that's my story for the jury. That's how I'd make it all stick. This man murdered thousands of people and he did it from a penthouse driving a Lincoln. Aside from that, you got nothing to worry about. That's pretty good. But that's why we go to court, isn't it, Richie? I got celebrities too. I got sports figures. I got celebrities. And I got the city. I took care of the city. You better believe it's gonna take care of me. I got more than that, Frank. Yeah, what you got? I got a line of people wanting to testify against you that stretches out the door and around the block. You've damaged a lot of lives, Frank. I got the Marzano crime family. Remember those boys? You put them out of business? I ain't got nothing to do with the Marzanos. The Marzanos ain't got nothing to do with me. They got everything to do with you and you know why. Why? Because apart from the fact they hate you personally, they hate what you represent. I don't represent nothing but myself. You sure? Young, black businessman like you, you represent progress. The kind of progress is gonna see them lose a lot of money. With you out of the way, everything can return to normal. You know what normal is to me, Richie? I ain't seen normal since I was six years old. Normal is seeing the police ride up to my house, bust in, drag out my little cousin and tie him to a pool. You know what they do? They shove a shotgun in his mouth so hard that they bust his teeth. And then they knock two fucking shotgun shells in his head and knock his fucking head off. That's what normal is to me, Richie. I don't give a fuck about no cops then. I don't give a fuck about them now. Shit! You can do whatever you want to do. Don't mean nothing to me. Don't mean shit to me if you show up tomorrow morning with your head blown off. You hear me? Hey, Frank. Get in line. 
That one stretches around the block too. All right. What you want to do? You know what you got to do. What you want me to do, huh? Snitch? I know you don't want no cops. So what you want? Gangsters? Pick one. I got Mick gangsters, Jew gangsters, guineas. They've been bleeding the city since they got off the boat, man. I don't give a fuck about no crime figures. You can have them. I'll take them too. You'll take them too. You'll take them? You talking about police? You want police? You want your own kind? They're not my kind, Frank. They're in business with you. They're not my kind. They're not my kind, just like the Italians aren't yours, all right? All right. What can you promise me, Richie? I can promise you, you lie about one name, you never get out of prison. You lie about one dollar, one offshore bank account, you never get out of prison. Now you can live your life rich in jail for the rest of your born days, or be poor outside for some of them. That's what I can promise you. I want them cops, Richie. I want them cops that killed my baby cousin and stole my money. That's what I want. So how'd you like the short film? I used the GH5S and the GH6 here to do that film. Now the last time I talked about the GH6, I talked about it like a dog, y'all. I had a lot of things to say. I said about a bunch of things that we didn't need, that we didn't want, things that we didn't ask for, that we got. A lot of that, nobody agreed with me. And I'm okay with that. But a lot of it, there were a lot of people that did agree. For example, a lot of people didn't see the need for 5.7K. I've used it. A lot of people didn't find the need for 4K120. I've had a chance to finally use it. I can tell you a couple things. A lot of things about this camera completely surprised me, caught me off guard. A lot of things were meh, but then again, after using it, I really, really do understand and have been affirmed about what I said about the GH5. Definitely about the GH5S now, especially. So you've seen the film. What'd you think? What'd you think of the footage? Far as look wise, it came out great. It was an idea that my actors actually came up with. I said, you know what? That's not too, too bad. Let me figure out a different way to repurpose it and let's film that. And we did that. We already, I was able to use the GH6 and the GH5S as well. You know, I got to admit, what truly surprised me in that test was the GH5S. The image quality was ridiculously great. I can tell you now, Regarding the GH6, because that's what you came to hear about. What is my opinion of the GH6 after using it for two weeks? I was very surprised at the GH6. Look, I said a lot of things about the GH6 that were very unpopular. In fact, some people said stuff like this and this. And I'm okay with all of that. Because at the end of the day, it's about learning and growth. Look, it's not a bad camera. However, the question is, is it so much of a leap See, that was my question. Was it enough of a leap to encourage an $800 additional purchase over the GH5? Regarding image quality, the camera does absolutely great. It is a definite step above the GH5. I will 100% hands down admit that. It's definitely a step up from the GH5. Is it S5 step up? No. Is it S1H step up? No. Is it Canon C70 step up. No. It is definitely a step up from the GH5. Certainly. The camera performed at ISO 5000, you guys. In the fl short film, I had it at ISO 5000. What was I trying to do? I was trying to match the GH5S. Why was I trying to match the GH5S? I said, this camera, th it, those were my unpopular opinions about this camera. So if I get the camera in hand, I need to shoot it the way I would shoot it for my projects. That's exactly what I did. 
I made this meet the standard of the GH5 at. I made this meet all the standards of the GH5, meaning no higher than four Cinema 4K, um, 400 megabits per second, things like that. Um, certain ways that I, I just treated it just like it was a GH5. I did notice there was definitely an image quality improvement, okay? So I'm not gonna make any bones, I was wrong. It is definitely a step up. It is more of an upgrade and not like a complete game changer. I don't see that at all. But is it great? Yes, it is. If the GH5 is great, and I'm saying this is great, then combine that with the other features, it's a good camera, okay? I was wrong. I didn't say it was a bad camera, but I'm just saying I wasn't seeing the value. The imagery on this camera is far sharper than any micro four thirds camera. Well, it's what, 25 megapixels instead of 20. So it's the most megapixels, but you also got to remember in a micro four thirds, ca four thirds camera, it's filming and looking at the inner centermost part of the lens, the sharpest part. So you're going to get an additional sharpness boost. And I can tell you, I saw that sharpness boost across every ISO, every lens I used, everything. And I used a series of Panasonic lenses. And for example, this is 12, 30, 12 to 35, 2.8, came out great, ridiculously sharp. The Panasonic 25 millimeter lens, the Olympus 45 millimeter lens, the Panasonic 42.5 millimeter lens, it is a ridiculously sharp seeing camera, especially compared to the GH5S, much sharper. But is sharper always good? Well, if you're doing TV shows, sharpness is great. But if you're doing cinema, that's why you're going to put things like a pro mist filter on it to smooth and soften those images out. So this camera is ridiculously sharp. That can, that can be good. That can be bad. Mainly it depends on what lenses because you can always just change to a different lens if you don't want to have as much sharpness. But that's just something to consider. How much you want to have to work for your image and what adjustments will you need to make. All right, let's check out some test footage. So we're looking at the GH6's IBIS. I'm doing a bunch of sloppy walking here, but trust me, if I had turned the IBIS off, the jitters, the shakes, the bounces would have been extreme. I did sloppy walking on purpose just to see, could it smooth it out a bit more? Yeah. So the next shots I'm gonna show you, we're really gonna show the GH5 IBIS versus the GH6. The GH5 IBIS legendary in its own right. But you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. The GH6 is much, much smoother. Check out the dynamic range in raw sunlight. The GH5, a lot more magenta in the skin. Take a look at those fingers at the tips. We got so much magenta in there, man. You got to correct for that. It's at ISO 2000 because I wanted to match from the GH5, the GH6, who has a base ISO of ISO 2000 with the dynamic range optimizer on. Well, here we go, the GH6. Look at the dynamic range in the highlights. It is not blown out and tore up in the fingers, and that magenta shift has been well tamed. Good job on that, Panasonic. When you look at them side by side, you can see that how much the GH5 shifts to that magenta. But with the GH6, you got less noise in the shadows, better highlight control, you got better colors overall, and a sharper image. GH6 for the win over here on this part. Now, image quality ISO equivalency. Now, when I was using the cameras, I'm going to use them the way I use them. Take a look at this image. Take a look good. Looks dark, but that's the GH5 at Cinema 4K. Well, this is how I would shoot with it. But let's look at the GH6 at its native ISO. When I say ISO equivalency image quality, we're taking the cameras at their top quality ISO and image quality that's suggested by the manufacturer. As you can see, the GH6 is much brighter because remember, its native ISO is what? ISO 2000. The GH5's is what? 400. Now, when you initially think about that, you say, well, that means the GH6 is just brighter. Well, once you turn the dynamic range boost off, well, guess what? You can get back to ISO 400, but that's not the way I shoot with my cameras. I try to shoot them at their best capabilities, which means in a case like this, I'd have to add more light. When you look at these images, all I did was color transform them and do some shadow adjustments. And this is what you can get. 
and I typically shoot at Cinema 4K at the 400 megabit, megabits file size. Now take a look at the GH5 when I color corrected, did a little editing, I turned some noise reduction on, I adjusted the hue to get that magenta shift out. This is the GH5. It's a good looking image. Of course it's darker. It's at ISO 400. But look how good it looks. You see, you have to work with the GH5 to get it. The primary difference why I stayed at ISO 400 is because if you had an Ari Alexa, you would stay at whatever its strongest ISOs are, and then you'd work around it. You'd add more light in a case like this. That's the primary difference I'm seeing besides the noise. Now look at the GH6. Much sharper. I put some noise reduction on, but the image is just ridiculously sharp. That magenta shift is gone, you guys. Panasonic did a great job in camera to kill that. Kudos to them on that, man. They gotta control that magenta shift, and it's not even, it's not that magenta shift is not there in the GH5S, but the GH5 definitely has it. The GH6, they took notes, they they made, they did a great job, they got rid of that. Exposure recovery. Now, this is gonna be pretty controversial. Here's at the exposure recommendation from the camera. This is what it should look like. Take a good look at those guys. Now, plus one. All we lost so far, and from what I'm seeing, is just a little bit of color saturation in the sky. Plus two. We our ch colors are starting to shift a bit, just a little bit. We still got the, the the shadows, but I don't recommend it. Now, plus three. Now they say you can do three stops, but I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe it's the way I develop and process my footage and my images, but I don't know. Now check out the highest quality image from the camera that you can currently get. This is 5.7K at the 800 megabits per second of V-Log, 2000 ISO, ProRes HQ, handheld, a sundown shot, well, golden hour. Absolutely excellent. Those colors are ridiculously saturated. It looks beautiful. Here's the GH5. Not as sharp. Definitely not as sharp. But the colors are pretty good, but not as saturated. I didn't boost the color saturation in these images too much. I boosted them equally. And you just get a better image out of the GH6. It is a step up. Another thing I noticed, what I definitely don't like, big time. They changed the battery. And it's not that they changed the battery that so much bothers me. But they changed the battery to where if you use an original Panasonic GH5 battery, or GH4 battery, or GH3 battery, guess what? You will not be able to use the highest quality features in this camera. What does that mean? You gotta pay to play. Ah, Panasonic, you got us. You gotta pay to play. So if you have this camera and you use a Lexar Express or any other compact flash type B card, that's fine. But if you don't have that Panasonic battery or if the one you have wears down from shooting highest quality, then I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to step down in quality. And is that what you want? Well, of course, you would solve for that if you're at like a wedding or something like that. But still, that's just something to think about. That means you got to invest in multiple Panasonic specific batteries to make sure you got the energy you need to get the file image quality you want. I don't like that. But hey, Panasonic's forcing everybody to step up. Another thing I definitely do not have a like for. If you look in there, you see two different card slots. What's wrong with having two different card slots? Well, let's think about it. That's technically almost the same thing as having one card slot. Here's why. You got one Compact Flash Type B card, Compact Flash Express Type B card, and you got another SD card in UHS-2. No matter what, they'll never be the exact same speed. So if that's the case, you really got one card slot if you're shooting at higher quality files. You're not really backing up at the same quality. You can't. It's not possible when you're using the highest quality settings. So that redundancy that GH5 users have had forever is gone. The only thing you can do is wait for the firmware update in order to do USB-C recording. And let me tell you, I'm so disappointed that Panasonic put this camera out and announced tons of features that it was going to have. The camera's out and it doesn't have those features. Why must you wait? If they know the camera can do it, just wait a, wait a month, fix those, fix those items, put the camera out with it. 
Maybe that's the camera, the bonus system that Panasonic's using to keep people addicted to their products. If I keep giving them a firmware update every six months, every four months, every once a year, it'll feel like a new camera and it'll be more and more value. No, no, just look. Fix the cameras right out the gate. What if this camera came out and was shooting raw from the gate? Come on now. That's another thing. You gotta wait for the raw update. Why? Panasonic, why? Why did you do this? You see, I've had the camera. I'm shooting with the camera. You know what? Image quality, I gotta admit. I like my GH5. I love my GH5, but I'm very impressed with the image quality from here. And it can only go up with raw. So why did you not release the camera able to shoot raw? Why did you make your users wait? I'm still griping about that, but so be it. I can't shoot raw. I don't know what a raw image looks like from this camera, and I probably won't, but who knows? Why do I say probably won't? Remember, it takes the Atomos Ninja V Plus, not the Atomos Ninja V, not to my knowledge, because raw from this camera would be 5.7K, and from my knowledge, the Atomos Ninja V it does not do 5.7 or 6K in RAW. And if it does, somebody in the comments hit me and let me know. I don't know if it does. We got to talk about the dynamic range boost, y'all. First of all, it does work. Does it work? These leaps and bounds that people talked about? No. No, it doesn't. Does it work better than the camera without using it? Yes, it does. I've seen it. I've seen how the highlights become more com more compressed in and not be just released to just burn out everything in broad broad daylight shoots i've seen it it works does it work tremendously markedly well to where so much to where you can't live without it no that's not the case i've shot with and without and i've tested it and it's very close but because it gives you a bit better just period and of an image that you do notice i would never turn it off I got sick of using these ND filters, these eight stop, six stop, 10 stop ND filters. I wanted to shoot at F2.8 during broad daylight like I do with my GH5 that I can use an ISO 400 or even the GH5S where I can use ISO 800. This, I had to borrow an ND filter that was much bigger, about 10 stops, 10 stops. Panasonic, if they knew that they were gonna create a system where you needed that much ND, why not just put a built-in ND filter system in the camera? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying. Bottom line, what's my opinion after two weeks with the GH6? It's a great camera, but there's a lot of things about it that will just irk and annoy me over time. Is it a, is it a great image-making device? Yes, it is. It makes great images. You've seen some. Would I suggest a new user buy this camera over something else there are many cameras i could point you to for many different reasons that fulfill a lot of the other gaps just beneath and just above this camera it sits in this zone of who is this camera really for it doesn't fully commit in the dynamic range department which is important to call itself a cinema camera it does not commit far enough to be that it's using dfd focus which has been ridiculously improved but would i rely on that for vlogging no, it's still DFD, death, death from defocus. No, so it still has these things about it that doesn't really give this camera much of an identity. Is it a great camera? Could you produce from it? Yeah. Are you about to put up with some stuff? Yeah. In fact, I mean, look at the weight. It's, I mean, I look at the weight, but you can't look at it, but it's huge. This is Micro Four Thirds. Panasonic has thrown out the advantages of small camera, big results. It's, it's about as big as pretty much most a lot of full frame cameras out there but look bottom line my opinion on the camera it has changed it's improved about how i feel about the camera but is this camera for me man nah i'm trying to make films i'm not trying to sit out and vlog i do this for fun i'm trying to make films you saw the imagery you see what, what i'm trying to do can this camera do it <sighs> I don't know. It doesn't commit far enough to be a cinema camera for me in the only in the only category that matters, image quality. For a cinema camera, I want the strongest image that a Madala can get me. And I love the image that this can produce, but I there are just other things about it and it's not enough of that image that I'm looking forward to produce to make me say, you know what? 
2200 bucks but give me a ninja v because i'm gonna want to shoot raw nah it's not doing that for me it still isn't but hey you guys tell me what you think is this camera especially what you've seen is it capable because i think it is tell me what you think in the comments y'all because y'all seen my video an unpopular opinion about the gh6 and y'all hate a lot of people hated me for it but look i said what i said the only part that i've taken back that i gotta admit that i have to take back i doubted the ability of the, this camera to give me a great image but it did that it proved me wrong hey panasonic look i hope y'all got a gh6 s in mind because this doesn't commit enough in the cinema camera department for me to stay with panasonic did it do as good as the gh5s not not by a long shot but hey one camera was built from the ground up for low light this one really wasn't so i can't expect everything but look y'all i'm david griffin tell me what you think in the comments below if you want to flame me up again i ain't worried about it i ain't scared go ahead and tell me what you think all right y'all i'm out peace go go for it